The things that make a PhD research thesis awesome are clearly the things like it's clear and concise, it clearly contributes new and novel and interesting stuff to the field that, that you're researching, but there also are a number of other things that can make a research thesis good. Now remember that your thesis is actually going to be examined by real people. Now those people are going to have egos, they're going to want to understand things, and in this video we're going to go through exactly what you need to do to impress those people who are actually reading your thesis and saying, yes, this person deserves a PhD. There are a few tricks that I've learned um, from my science communication days, and uh, it goes a little bit beyond just making sure that the logic is flawless and that you actually contribute something new to the field. So let's get into it. This video is brought to you by my newsletter at andrewstaveton.com.au forward slash newsletter. Go sign up and get all of the information that I do not publish anywhere else. And on the first day when you sign up, you'll be getting a daily planner to make sure that you are moving forward with your PhD or your research. Um, and also, go check out academiainsider.com because there is my new website about helping people overcome the loneliness and the stressfulness of a PhD, which includes a members only community. And that community is growing quickly at the moment. And there's tons of awesome people helping each other become better academics. Go check it out. So first of all, I just want to cover the kind of basics and the general knowledge about exactly what a PhD thesis should have inside it so that the reviewers, when they're looking at it, actually feel confident that you've done something new and interesting and that you are worthy of a PhD. And uh, first of all, you need to make sure that, that your understanding of the literature is clear and you understand where your thesis sits in that kind of uh, literature uh, soup and where the gaps are that you're filling or the new ideas or the new problems that you're solving, all of that sort of stuff, that should be clear and concise. And that's really the first part of the thesis in the introduction. Um, the introduction is a place where you get to set the scene and then you kind of hone in, you get sort of narrower and narrower until you sort of explore the research that's directly related to, related to your PhD and you say, but, you know, there's a gap or they're wrong or whatever it is, and then you introduce uh, essentially your problem, you kind of tease out the problem that you're solving or the gap in the literature that you're uh, filling with your thesis and then you introduce them as kind of a teaser to the rest of your thesis and the sort of techniques that you've used and uh, the results. You know, you don't give any information or any details but you kind of tease out the results um, and just say, well, this is where we are heading and this is what we've kind of found out so let's delve into it. The second thing is, is it absolutely clear what is new after reading your thesis? There are so many sort of results and discussions and things that we have during our PhD that really you have to boil your thesis down to one or two major issues that your thesis or your PhD is solving. And uh, that can be relatively difficult because, you know, throughout the course of your PhD, you're trialing this area and you're going over here and you're trialing, you know, new techniques and maybe that doesn't work and you come back, but it informs something else. So it's not really like a linear relationship. If you're writing a PhD thesis, ideally, you know, in an ideal world, it would be like chronological. It'd be like, I started here, time passed, and then I got here, done. But that's not how it really works. You kind of like explore and, and pull things in from different areas. And it can be a little bit confusing when you start reading a PhD thesis about exactly what this person has found is new and interesting, especially uh, if it's drawing on all of these different uh, like subject areas. And so uh, a good PhD thesis, highlights without a shadow of doubt what is new and what the unique and novel contribution to the field is. The third thing that is an absolute foundation for a good PhD thesis is, is the logic flawless? So can you go from sort of results to discussion to conclusion? Is there a obvious train of thought that gets through there without sort of uh, having to make any leaps of faith or, you know, uh, jump over any obvious barriers to, to get to your conclusions. So one thing I like to do is I like to give my PhD papers and my uh, thesis, I, you know, I give it to someone who's clever but not in my field or a little bit outside of my field and just ask them, does this make sense? Like I'm saying these are the results, 
this is how I've kind of interpreted them and therefore this is the conclusion I can make based on those results. And if that logic isn't clear, if you can't do that for each problem you're solving or each bit of data that you're presenting, you're just gonna annoy the examiner and they're gonna immediately sort of like decide that you don't know what you're talking about and that can sort of seep into the rest of your thesis and uh, it can sort of like poison the well, so to speak. So you do have to make sure that your logic is absolutely flawless and the only way to do that is to have robust discussions with people in your field, uh, people a little bit outside of your field. Don't always Always rely on your supervisor because there's some things when you talk to your supervisor solely about this stuff like it's the unspoken stuff that really needs to bubble to the surface so that um, you can really understand and really get a clear idea about how your results have led to your conclusions and so doing that with someone who's not familiar with your work is the easiest way to do that so continue to have discussions throughout and if you have that brainwave just quickly jot it down Jot it down somewhere, keep it for your thesis, keep it for your paper that you're writing. Um, and yes, logic and making sure that it is flawless throughout different results, discussion, conclusion. That's how you make a good PhD. So those three, I think, really are the absolute foundations of writing a good PhD thesis. Now, the issue is, is that uh, there are other aspects of your PhD because it's being read by a person, it can easily distract them from your awesomeness, from the awesome things that you're presenting. And uh, as a human, if it's not easy to follow, that kind of gets into your, uh, your kind of ego and it's like, hang on, why don't I understand this? And then instead of saying, well, maybe it's not something I understand, they're like, clearly there's something wrong with this thesis. So there has to be sort of a good, um, level of uh, them being able to understand exactly what you mean. And I always feel like formatting is completely underused in PhD theses. Like use bullet points, use different boxes that kind of highlight the key thing, you know, like in summary or like, you know, breakout boxes, which allow you to actually just pinpoint and highlight the exact thing that you're trying to say from the discussion or from the paragraph above. Um, those sort of uh, formatting tools can really help people go, oh, okay, that's exactly what they mean or move on and it's just about making them feel comfortable as they navigate through your PhD so there's no doubt that organization of um, a PhD makes a huge difference in someone how someone feels about the journey they take while reading it you know some of these theses you know this one's about 230 pages I think some of them um, can you know be like 500 pages so making sure that someone can get all the way through this uh, is very important and you want them to feel comfortable along Along the way. You want them to go like, okay, I get it. And if uh, you're reading through it or someone's reading through it and they just get a little bit frustrated at some points, that's a point where you really should hone in and go, okay, what is it that's frustrating you about this? What don't you understand? How can I make it clearer? Because ultimately it's about this person going, ah, I understand exactly what's going on here and I'm impressed by this thesis. Have a PhD. Clear writing is another really important component of making someone just feel comfortable with your thesis. Now, as a researcher, you are always kind of like tackling tough, intricated, interwoven ideas and terminologies and it can get quite convoluted. And when you're trying to talk about something, it can be easy to kind of use run on sentences. It can be easy to um, kind of overcomplicate the matter by pulling in things that you think are related, but being absolutely clear with each sentence and each paragraph um, is very important for making the person who's reading your thesis feel as if it's worthy of a PhD. So one thing I like to do is, uh, as part of the editing process of a thesis or a paper, um, is I, in, the, in the margins of each paragraph, I write down exactly what the purpose of that paragraph is. And if I can't clearly work out what a sentence or the purpose of a paragraph is, I either delete it or I rework it until I'm absolutely sure that, okay, well, this paragraph talks about this this data or this table and it's talking specifically about that and it leads people through the story of that one specific thing and those building blocks each sentence each paragraph builds up into a thesis but uh, 
sometimes I had a had the habit of kind of having a paragraph and then as I'm writing, my brain goes, oh, talk about this. Oh, actually, yeah, that's a really good woven kind of thing that I can put in. But really it just confuses people because they're not in a kind of intimate relationship with your PhD as you are. So you need to make sure that uh, it is clear. It is clear exactly what you're talking about. And each paragraph and sentence has a distinct purpose without weaving too much kind of weird stuff into it. I wrote my thesis in LaTeX and uh, at the time I couldn't really work out a way of properly spell checking all of the different chapters. And so what happened was one of my reviewers of my thesis said that uh, it was a shame that my thesis was full of distracting grammatical errors. And I completely understand that. And I'm sorry to uh, that reviewer. But um, you know, most, but mostly now there are you know, like software tools like um, Grammarly and also there's ProWriter and other, other sort of like uh, tools that can help you get around those really just basic uh, errors and grammatical mistakes. But um, that is one thing that's very important to making people feel as if you know what you're talking about. And I think I undermined my PhD a little bit. And he said that it was on every single page. And I think that's a little bit of uh, an exaggeration. But uh, nonetheless, it was so annoying to him that he actually put it in the uh, comment section of the review. So uh, just make sure that it is free of grammatical errors, that um, you know your full stops are in the right place. And even as sort of like minute details as each individual author's middle initial. If they include it in the paper, include it in your reference list. That was another thing that that same reviewer said was that, oh, I noticed some of the references were missing their middle initial. And I was like, you went through all my references. And I worked out in the end, it was because it was his papers and his friends' names that were missing the middle initial and he just knew about that. So yes, all of those details, you know, Save it for the last moments, the last kind of couple of days before submission. Just double check, go through. Um, if you can, pay for someone to proofread your uh, thesis, just looking for those mistakes. And uh, I really feel like that's a really good way to turn a good PhD thesis into a great one. Now this may seem a little bit silly, but I know tons of people who have reviewed academic theses, PhD theses, and their first thing when it lands on their desk is, oh, that's thick. Like, it's weird. So first impressions really do matter with a thesis as well. And so you do have to make sure that it is reasonably you know, substantial and it does reflect the sort of size of the theses in your field. So this was a pretty standard size. Now, for people on the internet that are like, oh, half of the pages are empty. Yes, that's because each university has a printing guidelines and this was single page. You couldn't have uh, double-sided pages. So all of them have blank and uh, writing. And that's all the way through. So making sure that it's uh, also printed to your your university's specifications is important and that helps improve the thickness. And so when someone receives this in the post, you want them to get it and go, oh yes, this like immediately they're like, this feels like a thesis. It's so strange, but I know reviewers who have done that and uh, when they've received light uh, theses that aren't very thick and don't have many pages. Sometimes they even say to me, oh, well, it wasn't very thick. It doesn't seem very substantial. And they immediately start reviewing it with that headspace. And then immediately you have to kind of like show them that you can get a thesis um, past them because you have to put in loads and loads of effort uh, to make it sound amazing. So thickness, it's weird, does go a long way to uh, allowing the first impressions to help smooth the way for a pass. So there we have it. There are all of the things that make a PhD thesis good and great. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And go check out academiainsider.com, sign up to the newsletter at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter, and I shall see you in the next video.